What's going on, chat? Happy BTL Tuesday, episode 479. Peace, as always, hold the fry. Joined by your two hosts, Krabs and Javon, presented by Picket Sports. If you're tracking the picket yesterday, you probably had a pretty good day. If you're telling my place, pretty solid day. If I could say so myself, Javon, how'd you do? Pretty well. Yeah, I guess uh, we were pretty dialed yesterday. We saw, I don't know what got into everybody, whether it was just Memorial Day tossing units, but everybody was putting together fat lays with plays and cashing. So we love to see that. Sure. We had our guy Mike last night cashing a fat five or six piece from plays from BTL yesterday. A goat, always tapped in, W's, 479, cutting it close to 500. Sure. Okay. Um, w, Dave. All right, chat, let's lock the fuck in. We got a squad ride. We got to celebrate here. W's, yesterday, Blake Snell. Look, it wasn't your legacy start, okay? When we needed you most, you didn't come through, but you did enough, okay? He did enough. He showed some signs of improvement. He looked fucking solid, early on and just kind of lost it late but you know what the giants bats were alive javon we got a w love that yeah shout out uh Taiwan walker for being worse that's all sure. we needed <laughs> um he is mushet he should be probably Very putting bad. a home with patrick corbin maybe Very they bad. just you know send him off uh, about their day hang him up um yeah sharp report was not as sharp for me but the plays we put out yesterday on twitter were very solid okay um sure and i have to address the college lacrosse championship as well notre dame was not losing anybody that team was a super team okay maryland's a great story they almost didn't even make the fucking tournament uh, they hung around they made it way further than anybody thought and they had no juice left for the championship notre dame wiped the floor they beat it by 10 okay the under hit in that game though i will say but maryland did not cover so w transparency there um god the royals team total under are you kidding me no, are you kidding bet. me with that play? Grabs. Are you kidding me with that play? I mean, they have one run the whole game, Javon. Top of the ninth. Eh, sure, put up a four-piece, five-piece. Fuck it. Why not? They still lose by one. For no reason. And I believe Classe was in there, too. He looks like shit. I'm just going to say it. He does. Classe looks like shit. Duran. Um, Duran, yes, sure. Yeah. Tomato, tomato. Duran looks like shit. He did last night, at least. Holy shit, man. They blew it. Errors, walks. I think they put up a five piece in the top of the ninth for no reason. Javon, they lose by one. That is piss. Are yeah, you kidding me? Miss. My fault, Chad. Obviously, Duran. Uh, we got a hype train rolling now. Life is okay. Javon will be okay. The squad ride hit. That's all that matters. Okay, let's be real here. We got Ian228 coming in, resubbing for 20 months. That's an OG. Love that. Chiote coming in, sub crabs. Today is the day. Uh, it's the under in the game one of the Mets game. Lick me. Also tell Trent to take off the trophies jersey, please. Can't do that. <laughs> Can't do that today. Um, we will talk plenty about the trophies game. Don't you worry, Chiota. All right. I don't know if I want to touch any of those Mets games. Javon, you have any interest in the daytime Dodgers? Kind of. Uh, I'm taking unders. <laughs> taking unders, surely. I do think Is that first uh... game early? Or it's during the day. 4 10 I mean, my time. Yeah. I knew it was the first game. I didn't know how early. Okay. Yeah. And okay. they're on the East Coast. So, I mean, 1 p.m. local time. So I, I mean, you can fade their bats. We know that. Yeah. There is wind blowing out, which is a little scarier than it probably should be. But I still, their bats don't matter in, in the daytime. They're just bad. Wind blowing out, totals down from 8.5 to 7, 7.5. I bet. No, hmm. but. Hmm. Interesting. All the graphics, including ones that we put out, talking about Glass Now not coming through. Glass Now is a fat favorite, having no luck, no dice, right? Them losing the Dodgers when he's minus 300 or greater. Crazy trend. Um, would not be surprised if we get an under in that first game of the day. That's where I would lean. All right, but let's stick to the Sharp Report recap. W recaps here. Javon, good work. Three and two. We take that. Any comments about the Red Sox play? I mean, I just had to get one dono out of the way for, for each <laughs> each section early with the Red Sox and Bassett. Worst and play of the year. The rest of it. Eh, I've had I've maybe had some worse plays, but uh, we just had to get one out of the way, craps. That's all we needed. Sure. Because, yeah, well, I might be secret Nats whisperer. Some people yeah, are talking. Yeah, tell me about this Nats, uh, this Nats love you have. I'd love to hear all that. Uh, we got plenty I'm, of time. We got an hour and a half. Feel free to take up the whole rest of the show. <laughs> tell me about this newfound Nats love you have. 
Well, yeah. I'm just bleeding attitude, man. I might have found the the secret sauce with with uh, which pitchers to back them against. Every time I take them, whether it's an over, whether it's an ML, they turn into the greatest offense of all time. And sure, uh, they've been they've been probably top team respect to my coin for like the past two weeks. I mean, I'm I'm a Nats closet Nats fan right now. Most profitable team in baseball in the ML because they're plus 200 every fucking game. They get no respect. They've got uh, marijuana Mitch on the bump. They've got Jake Irvin on the bump. All these random guys who nobody respects, although I will be fading Jake Irvin today. We'll talk about that in a moment. These dudes are overperforming. These dudes are doing all, they're doing all right. The Nats right now hanging around 500, lingering, right? That team's got so much heart. They should be 15 games under 500 with the talent on that roster, right? The fact that they're even close is impressive. They're fun. They're scrappy. They're exciting. They keep winning as big dogs. Gotta love them. Yeah. Nats and Rockies have the book shaking, Kyle saying in chat. I mean, yeah, they have to. They have Dude, to. Marimano Mitch is, is good, bro. Dude, he's pretty fucking solid. Reed for Parker. Okay. <laughs> he was <laughs> he was nasty and even tossed a couple turks before he left, just out of respect. He did. I mean, that's just he a, did. That's just the a tip end. of the cap. A tip of the cap outing from Mitchell Parker. I know. W over there in that game. Great play. Curious to hear your thoughts in that game today when we get to there. Um, we got a couple other subbies. Dyson coming in, resubbing as well. We had Kitch coming in, resubbing. Uh, during TMA, guys, if you missed that, Trent was on there. Um, you can go back and rewatch on YouTube, of course, right after the show as well. Okay, people forget that if you missed TMA, if you missed BTL, you can go back and rewatch those puppies on the YouTubes. Okay, and you can also go back and rewatch Javon's MLB series price um, or series preview that he went over yesterday. Although most of those games probably already started up in series. Javon, any angles you hit nails on the heads yesterday for that? I mean, second week in a row, I guess it's been the Nats against the pitcher. It was Pablo Lopez last week, and it was Charlie Morton now because he got fucking moosed. I think, uh, yeah. what, did he give up all eight of those runs? That was an incredible performance from Uncle Charlie on the Nats. You're goddamn right it was. The Nats yeah. bats came to play. The Nats bats on the roads, they're good. Nats bats at home, eh. it's like 10 runs or zero runs, right? And mostly zero. Okay. Yeah. Nats bats on the road, though. You can trust. All right. We got a 10 unit subway coming in from Mike. He's taking those units wow, from that parlay he hit. Can we get that parlay up on the screen? W Mike. Mike. I know Goots can dig and find that puppy. It's probably not too far away. Can we get that parlay up there on the screen? I know he tracked that shit on Picket. Okay, Mike, very loyal BTL viewer, very loyal follower here. Um, yeah, we'll take those 8.3 units to go. Go ahead and bag that up for me, will you? Um, how about Beautiful. a five piece, Javon? Love that. Hold Absolutely it. love that. Hold the fry. All right. The over in Atlanta, Cincy ML, the over in Colorado, Blake Snow on the ML, and the Stars, who I believe are down 0 2 in that game yeah. last night, came back, wreaked havoc, took a little series lead. Sure. Okay. Um, let's fucking go, Mike. No wonder why he's dropping 10 you subby whales. We appreciate you, Beast. He's rich. All right, folks. He's rich. We got Prendy coming in, resubbing as well. Josh Naylor, Dinger Tuesday. Prendy, you know we're going to talk about it. I actually yeah, feel pretty good about my Dinger about Tuesday plays. We will. Oh, we will. Javon, you excited for some Dinger Tuesday action today? Uh, I've been more excited. If you haven't noticed okay. or anybody hasn't noticed, we have a, a lot of seven, seven and a half, even eight totals on the board. So, I mean, it's probably not my favorite day, but I'm sure you hmm. got some bangers. Crabs put the ring, Nats jacket, and the glove on. Cold, and I still need that ring. I'm working on it behind the scenes, okay? I'm going to get that goddamn fake replica ring. Don't you worry. But until I have it, I can't put on the full fit. Doesn't yeah, feel right. You mean that Nats right. jacket's on the aisle anyway. It's right here. <laughs> That's facts. Javon's keeping that puppy safe. Left it in Dallas. <laughs> sure. Okay. That's good. Keep that thing close to you. It'll, it'll show you what a winner looks like. Yeah, okay. it's, it's in the in the closet right next to the Sam Laporta <laughs> jersey. So Javon's got that thing legacy. next to the fucking next to the trash can. Okay, no, nah, not anymore. Um, Shit. We got the hype train rolling. W's Prendy getting excited for the Dinger Tuesday segment for today. Dave Martinez's burner. We can't let this get swept either. Coming in, lost an 8K parlay because the Astros last night. Today we bounce back. Nats under Nuke Irvin shoves. Well, Davy Martinez burner, you might be a little biased there. Back in your guy on the bump today. Um, I'm not sure how well he's going to pitch. All right, but I don't want to uh, reveal any secrets too early here. Okay, let's do. Let's finish up these W recaps, and then we'll go into the plays for today. We got plenty of angles. Okay, 
God, this BTL lineup hurt, man. This hurt the soul. Robert Gasser, you are a legitimate MLB starter. Talk about a guy who should be on the Nats right now. Throw him in the fucking group with random McGee's who nobody's heard of, who get no respect, and they come through and deliver. Results on the bump. Robert Gasser, do your job. Blake Snell, he came through, correct? Yeah. I believe he can. Last pitch of the okay, game, yes. legacies. Good. Made that so yes. much harder than it needed to be, but. I saw Trent Spurgeon yeah. from that, W's. Um, and then Chris Bryant. I mean, where do I even start with Chris Bryant? You couldn't hit the ball better yesterday and not find a hit or not do anything productive than Chris Bryant yesterday. I mean, he hit a ball to the warning track. He hit a rocket to the second baseman who made a crazy fucking diving stop to turn a double play. Chris Bryant just could not find his way on the fucking base paths. And the Rockies scored plenty of runs. Everyone else scored on the team, except for our guy, Chris Bryant. They got me with that square, man. They fucking got my ass. Um, fully read it out. Hasn't scored a run in two months. Javon, they got me. That's on me. Yeah, I mean, Shit's he was wet. demolished in baseballs. So I can't really, can't really hate on it. Shit. I'm blown, man. That cost us a three-piece. Felt oh, really good got, about it. You got some more squares to push today? Yep. Chat, that one's on me. The Chris Bryant square. All right. Let's, uh, enough living in the past. Okay. King of the boards. You know those both smacks. We don't even need to fucking go over those puppies. Chat, do I, uh, are you guys picking up what we're putting down here with the king of the boards? Are, are you guys tailing? Are you interested? Are you intrigued? Are you locking in these plays? We got to They're hitting. got to talk about the, the sneak use on this under and the double down. On uh, we got some early. What do you do at three zero? Yeah, right after that first inning, uh, yeah. I live bet it again in the second inning. As soon as we saw, yeah, uh, Seattle came through with three runs early. Live bet that under once again, nuked it. Had copious units, probably five on that under total. Um, never in doubt. Not sweaty never. at all. One bit. <laughs> Um, there's something about that ballpark out there in Seattle, man. It, runs are just impossible yeah, to tough. produce. It's like they're playing on a different planet out there sometimes. Nobody talks about it. Everyone talks about, um, I don't know, all these other parks that are pitchers' parks. They talk about the Wrigley Wind. And nobody talks about Seattle, T-Mobile Park. Impossible to score runs. And they had a home run derby there last year also. People forget that. But the Juice Baseballs helped out. Um, yeah, don't rob me. Yeah, don't units me came derby, home. Man. Snake units came home. I mean, Javon, uh, that play was on my radar when we got on BTL yesterday, but after talking through it, I fell in love with that play more and more, kept locking in more units throughout the day, and Seattle and the Astros, they returned the coins home. Love it. Okay, yeah. we're up fat units on a Monday. Very rare. Very rare. Rare, okay, yeah. Today, some great Mondays don't no. grow on trees. No, profitable Mondays, they do not. Those don't come around often, folks. Not if you're sharp. If you're a square, Mondays are like your best days of your life. Mondays, it's like handout central. You're hitting all the square bets left and right. They're building up your bankroll, and then they take it and then some throughout the week and over the weekends, right? Typically, I find the most success betting over the weekends. As the week goes on, I find more success. Early in the week is when I produce cake. But today, let's hope we can continue the trend from yesterday because we started off the week great, Javon. We'll see how it goes. Um... You know, after hitting all those bets, sneak units, galore, squad ride yesterday, I really want to lock in on one play for today. That's ideally scenario. You know, I'm double down, I'm doubling down, double dipping, and I'm throwing a rack or close to it on one play today. We're doubling our net worth. Okay, that's sure. the game plan. Keep it simple. No KBO plays needed when we're hitting plays over here in the U.S. Okay, you keep those in the back pockets when we need them most. Okay. WBTL yesterday, W Jake, referral code for Pickett, use Javon. Um, that should work for you. And it's not a sports book, guys, but yes, use the promo code, get active, start tracking your bets. Everybody I know around me uses it. If you guys have legal books, um, if you have prize picks, go ahead and fire up Pickett. Use promo code Javon, promo code Shelly, promo code BTL, and start tracking your bets so you know how much coins you're up or down. It's really that simple. Okay, guys, we got a hype train rolling. W's. Let's keep moving and grooving here. Enough talking about the past. All right, Javon. Um, w day yesterday, though. Yep, sure. No wager wheel today. Let's go ahead and get that on no. the record. We're not fucking even talking about the wager wheel. We're keeping that thing locked up in a closet. No need. Um, Goots, you want to tell the people about your little uh, wager you had yesterday? I don't know if he wants to fill them in, but 
Uh, got pretty close for Goots spinning that wheel yesterday. The one I have with you. <laughs> In the group chat, bro. Yeah, I think, what was it, when they had like five runs? Maybe it was when they had, yeah, it was when they had like five runs. Yeah, I was like, five, the, I think. Yeah, if the Nats score more runs than the Orioles yesterday, I'd spin the wheel. Yeah, they got close. They got close. Yeah, lucky, no they, cigar. lucky they didn't do shit for like four innings. That's what I was hoping for, yeah. <laughs> did you did at least get sweaty there at the end? A I little mean, bit. I sent I sent the Kermit the Frog gif of him biting his nails. So yeah, I was a little nervous. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. As long as you were sweating that out for a second, because I was geeking yeah. at that. Yeah. You know, it was <laughs> huge too. If you weekend. didn't get the if you didn't get the Parker turkeys right before you left, yeah, because they were up, they would have been up like eight zero, you're probably getting a position player. So that's probably. Yeah. Big time luck for you. Because I think I think I the mean, rules you got to be up eight. I keep trying to put out opportunities for me to get on the wheel in there. They just, they just don't be smacking, you know. I'm just well, don't act, don't act like you're throwing out an opportunity every day to get on the wheel. <laughs> I pick yeah. my spot. Like you're throwing I pick out my options spots. left and right. You pick the spots yeah, maybe once yeah. or twice. We'll get yeah. you back on there. Um, maybe. Al one hundred's coming in resubbing as well for twenty months. That's a goat. I've seen him in here for years. W Al one hundred's. Anybody else in the giving mood today? Anybody else feeling like a winner? I am. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like a winner today. Uh, bless the chat with some subbies if you can. All right. If you're feeling good from the squad ride, uh, be in a giving mood. The gambling gods, they appreciate that. They appreciate gifts. Okay. I promise you that. Um, all right. Let's lock in. Javon, why not? We got a lot to sure. talk about today. We got NBA. We got NHL. We got MLBs. And you talked about all these low totals today. Well, good thing I have all of shit. <laughs> uh, well you don't um, have any of the low totals so that is true i picked the ones that were high good point yeah um let's talk about cincy we got a lot of red on this sharp a lot of red hmm. ton of red yeah interesting it's to right. contrast well, the, the green that's going to be on it for the recaps well we got some contradicting plays though here javon you've got a little nats under i got a little first five over so this is going to be an interesting day um let's see if we can lock in and provide the people with some winners okay let's get it started out in cincy here I want to talk about this game. We got Cardinals. We got Reds. Um, shout out the Reds for continuing their win streak last night. W play on the ML there. Talk about sweaty. That sure as hell was early, but the Reds pulled away and they held that damn lead. W's. Um, Cardinals lost for the first time in a week and a half. I think they were on like a 7-8 game win streak there. Um, party's over. St. Louis. And now it's Cincy's turn. Now that game yesterday, not a ton of runs in that game. What was the final score? 3-1, to one, I believe. 3-1, yeah. Yep um kyle gibson and abbott on the bump pretty solid stats kyle gibson a veteran uh you know household name at this point andrew abbott has that era down below a two seven sheesh sneakily good for him Goat. uh three overs on the crabs card call your loved ones the end is near yeah straight out mikey <laughs> and we were just talking about how there's a lot of low totals in mlb today and i'm coming up here with three overs so stick with me okay this is not common but after hitting all of our bets yesterday i guess we can splooge and take some fun ones with some overs in the mlb um, but looking at Gibson and Abbott prize pick squares, you know, Gibson had that earned run square up. Abbott's fantasy score looked a little lower than I thought it would be, but maybe that's because the Cardinals offense is cooking. I do think the Cardinals offense bounces back against Abbott today. And I like seeing the juice and the total moving up, um, you know, for the over nine and a half in this game after we saw the game soar under in game one yesterday. Um, I don't think Abbott is going to continue to shove at the rate that he is right now. I think he's due for a bad start. But him and Gibson have been shoving recently. Uh, I think it's a little weird seeing that total moving up. I like the splits on this over. I think we see runs galore in the second game of the series, unlike we saw yesterday. Yeah, I'm not gonna not gonna say I hate it. It's just that the Cardinals are one of the teams that I've been. They're just like the Padres, which that yesterday they got shut down by Trevor Rogers, which is a conversation for another day. But <sighs> Cardinals have been mushy against lefties. Abbott's been nails. Right. So I think if you I think if you just want an over, I think you're just betting that Abbott gets yoinked. So it might be maybe not a bad idea to stack that with cards ML. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. All right. Um, tell me about this under in Washington, will you? I, I can't wait anymore. I need to hear about it. Yeah. So, I mean, what what are you, uh, you talking about Jake Irvin? That's your concern here? Or are you thinking the Nats not are even. going to hit too? I think the Nats show up today early. I think the Nats show up and they hit up Freed at least minimally. Um, do I think, you know, that wager isn't mainly on Jake Irvin? Sure. Okay. I think Jake Irvin honestly gets uh, annihilated today. I think the Braves could hit this themselves in the first five. I think this is going to be a rare blip on Jake Irvin's stat sheet for this season. Um, yeah. 
but I do think free gives up a couple. I thought his fantasy score was a little bit low with how well he's been dealing, but maybe it's the Nats bats on the road after what we saw them do yesterday as well, showing up. Um, but it's not like a lot of these Nats have had great success against Freed. He typically owns us. Um, thought it was a little bit weird to see the total and the juice moving up there on those books. And I thought it was a little bit weird seeing Max Freed's fantasy score a little bit lower than I thought. That's fair. And uh, I think Max Freed, for one, absolutely deals. Because, you know, all I talk about, like the Cardinals and the Padres, how terrible they've been against lefties, you know who's worse? The Nats. Nationals. I the know. Nationals. After last year when they were randomly good against lefties for no reason, remember that? It's like what we talked yeah. about for the first half of the year. Well, now it's coming back to the law of averages here, regression. They can't fucking hit a lefty to save their life. I'm with you. They can't. Yeah. And I mean, it's not like it's not like they're, they're at the bottom of like the league damn near and every single category. And it's not like they're usually like the bottom of the league is probably like 70, 80 WRC plus, which is bad in itself. Like the bottom's like 55 and the Nats are 62. So like they're like, they're not just not good. They're very bad. So like, I think we get a nails free start. I can respect the fact that, I mean, I've seen Jake Urban square. So like, usually I would be uh, really scared of that. But the fact is this Braves offense right now just does not scare me one bit. I think they're going to hit them up a little bit, but not enough. And the Nationals bullpen at the very least, I'm not worried about them because Parker gave them depth yesterday. No A guys really had to be used. And I think that's going to be fine today. Braves bullpen, same thing. They're going to platoon well, and Max Freed is going to give them depth. So I don't think too much of the, the load is going to be on them. So I do think if you if you like an over, it's probably best to do first five where you're at. But I don't think we see many runs in this series. I was kind of planning on doing exactly what I did, flip-flopping with an over game one, under game two, and I'm sticking to it. Mm. So if you look at the prize picks board for this game, it screams runs early. It does. Um, it screams Irvin getting destroyed. And I will it does scream fully, Irvin I will fully destroyed. acknowledge that. But with so the Braves, I'm leaning into that. Yeah. I can yeah, I can respect that. It's just the Braves. The Braves have had so many of those for like the past month. It's always just like, oh, <clears> this guy's this guy's fully read it out. His numbers are super, super low. And maybe this is the day they break out. I gotta see it first. Mm. I mean, it's crazy looking at his squares. He's got a two and a half run run square and he's been shoving, but it's a goblin. Like it should be a normal square, but it's a goblin against the Braves yeah. offense that really has not done much recently. He's got a 16 and a half pitching out square that people are saying, you know, could be Corp. Looks a little low to me. He's got a walks allowed square that I love that we're going to talk about here in a moment. I mean, just a hilarious walks allowed square that we're going to have to show the people. A hits allowed square that's just as funny, just as red. I've never seen a pitcher get this disrespected. Yeah, I think I think he can get destroyed and still goes under. I think this could be like a 6-1 game. I don't think the Nats offense does anything. Scary. Scary, scary, scary. Um, how do you think Freed's going to do it? Because looking at his strikeout square, it's not looking like he's going to be doing it with the Ks. And you know the Nats like to put the ball in play. Yeah, they like to put the ball on the ground, which that's yep. that's Freed's bet bread and butter. It's like they're they're bad against lefties, period, but they pound the ball into the ground against any any pitcher from both sides. He's like a really good ground ball pitcher, but especially lefties. So like he he doesn't need to strike them out. And he probably won't, because he just needs to feed them in the zone and the ball's not going to be lifted in the air at all. So like I think mm. that's just that's one of the reasons why like I'm a little concerned about the Braves bullpen just in general, because they haven't been good. Freed could be super efficient and give them eight innings if everything goes like he wants it to. And I could totally see that happening. Shit, he could go nine. Could go nine if he's super efficient. Give him Maddox. Why not? Shit, even 10 extra innings. Is extra that innings. Why yeah, not? That could happen. Um, I need some explanation for the Freed five and a half hits a lot square that's up on the board. So I need some explanations for his one and a half earn run square as a juiced goblin when it looks like it could be a normal square. I mean, uh, you don't get many, like, against somewhat respectable offenses, a one and a half. You don't really get those at, like, normal numbers. Mm. Those those don't come around too often. But, like, I, I, I'm i still standing on free dealing. He is coming off of a start where I really usually wouldn't like to back him. But the fact that it was against the Cubs offense, really, I don't care because I could go out there and throw a complete game masterclass against that offense right now. Shout out uh, Gaster yesterday, making them look like toddlers. Sure. Uh but yeah, he's, I think he's going to deal against an ounce. Okay, okay. Well, 
I guess we'll agree to disagree on this one, but at least I'm going in there first fivers for primers. Get in, get out. Maybe we get five quick runs. Bullpens lock in. Maybe the Nats good have pull. Their, maybe they have the leads and they put in good pull masterclass. That does happen. The Braves Braves games are one of those teams. Like they do have a when they do score, it's in little bursts, and then in a lot of their games, it kind of just fizzes out for a long period of the game. So it's very possible you could get your five and still not get nine in the total game. Right. And I talk about all the time, you know, capping the human aspect of these games and not just the numbers, the X's and O's, this, the that's. Uh, the human aspect for this, you know, the Braves, Acuna gets hurt. Their first game, they lose to the Nats at home. It's a little embarrassing, right? I can't feel good. These guys can't feel great waking up this morning after losing their first game without Acuna. I feel like the boys bring the bats to that. I feel like the Braves have, that was a little bit of a wake up call for them Fair. yesterday. Um, emotional sides you know, betting the people aspect of it. I think the Braves are going to be carrying the weight for that first five. I'm with you. Let's just hope it's not too many. Okay. Yeah. Just enough. We'll see how it goes. All right, chat. We're going to try to fuck the middle there. First five over four and a half and the full game under eight and a half. Nobody said it was going to be easy, but if anybody could do it, we can. All right. Let me hear about the snakes. For today yeah. i want to hear about their ml on the road against the defending world series champs yeah this is the uh the first of a little two game set of a world series rematch which huh. just in general when i like to uh when i see these happen throughout the season i love to take the team that lost in the world series which that's a kind of in my mind at the back of it but uh, i do want to fade dane dunning and the d-backs offense has not been fantastic really at any stretch of the imagination definitely worse against lefties so they do get a, a righty and dunning but it's kind of the exact guy they want to face. Even in like when he's been good in stretches, he still has a little bit of a home run problem. And the snakes, when they have these little stretches of offense, that's where they come from, especially for righties that kind of have similar stuff to Dane Dunning. So I do think they wake up today. Wouldn't be surprised if Goots's guy, Christian Walker, does again on Dinger mm -hmm. Tuesday. Might have right. to take him. But uh, I think the snakes bats wake up a little bit today. And I kind of like the matchup for fought against uh, a Rangers offense that, I mean, outside of, Seager, who's starting to heat up a little bit, they're still struggling. So I still want to keep uh, attacking them in a couple different ways. But Snakes hmm. Bats have my interest today. So going back to the prize picks board, back to the well here, you know what I'm going to bring up? Brandon bring Falls prize pick squares. Yeah. Looking like he might not have the best start he's had recently. He's been pretty good recently, low key. He's got that two and a half run runs square that, you know, I'm not in love with. It's not screaming at me, but. Would probably lean the more than, but still it's against the defending World Series champions, right? Um, his fantasy score is a little bit low compared to what he's been doing recently. He's had two 40-plus pieces back-to-back, -back, almost a 50-berg on the fantasy score recently. So, um, you know, thoughts, concerns with the prize pick squares for Fall. I don't think he's going to throw a gem. Like I said, it's, okay. it's a lot more on the bats than it is Brandon Fought. Plus, uh Okay. Probably the most important element of it, not that the D-backs is just miles better. You know who has the worst bullpen ERA in all of baseball, not named the Marlins? Rangers. Uh, take a guess to say the Rangers because they're miss. Yeah. That okay. would be the Rangers. Yeah. Huh. So, I mean, uh, I also think like with a, an off day, it's pretty big tier for Fott. Somebody was saying his pitching outs is, is green as Ma. They, uh, they've been going through something where like they've had to use them a little longer in certain starts. They won't have to because the – bullpen's a little rested with the off day so i think that hook is going to be a little earlier and he struggled like third time through the order um so i think that's that's kind of better they can kind of use them how they want to in this game get the bullpen in a little earlier so he doesn't get yoinked by like seager oh. seeing him for a third time hopefully uh the rangers they don't really have an answer because if dane dunning is getting killed that bullpen is going to get destroyed whoever they bring in so i uh i do do think fa can get touched up a little bit leash would be a little shorter but the d-backs bats are coming to play in this game why are there no dane dunning squares up on prize picks for this game couldn't tell you do we know maybe maybe it's uh, a lot with these guys that are like half relievers half starters sometimes they're waiting to see confirmation until like they say they're not using an opener or something like that okay so, i mean it's it's probably not official and we'll see when it does happen but it's going to be Dane Dunning in some form or fashion today. Okay. Still not officially announced. Chad is saying yeah. that's interesting. Javon, you like the over in this game overall. You like runs. In this I do. Game. That's what it yeah. sounds like. I'm starting to really like this over. I'll be honest with you. 
Um, do I like Arizona catching 10 cents of steam? Sure, I do. Do I like fade in Texas right now? Well, they've been pretty mush yet, so not really. But um, like I talk about all the time, you can't fade systems. You can't fade trends in MLB. Keep fading the Rangers. They're mush right now. Keep fading them. They keep getting line respect for no reason. That's why yeah. I, Arizona's catching some steam because the line's getting back to where it should be with Fodder and the Bum, why... who's looked much better recently. That's why, I mean, I started getting over the hump with the Cubs recently. That's why I've been just auto-fading shit out of them, and it's been printing. The Rangers offense, minus Seager, is pretty much in the same spot. So if I like a spot for them, even though this one's probably more Arizona bats rather than a pitcher against them, I'm going to do it. Got to do it. Dude, I like the over in this game. We're seeing Arizona on a little under streak recently. We're seeing the Rangers bats. I mean – Sure, they dropped you know, a six piece in the last game of that series, but overall they're not scoring at all. You know, my one concern about that crabs is hmm. I really every single Rangers total is always high, no matter what, especially when they play in Texas. And usually like the sharp overs will be like at nine when they're in the Rangers ballpark. And I feel like if they're really gonna get moose today, it would be or if you're gonna get like a flurry of runs, it would be at nine. Like we've seen no no like taper off for the totals they've been getting, even when their offense has been dog shit. It's like I, I never try to take like the sharp Rangers overs really anymore. And when I see it a little number usually than you would normally see, that's why I'm I'm kind of leaning more towards snakes than than Rangers. Could we finally be seeing an adjustment at this point of the season from these, you know, from the odds makers for these two offenses that have been a little weaker than expected after going to the World Series? We could. I just, I do find it interesting that, like, the adjustment, if that is, it comes when they're two of the worst bullpens in the league involved, too. Huh. Okay. Well, Primer says they start a 15 game win streak tonight. Do we just keep taking that and rolling it over? <laughs> Might as Why well. Not? Yeah. Might as well. Might as well. Unbelievable. Okay. Um, yeah, I like that over, but if you really like Arizona and want to lean into that, sure, I could get down with it. I could be convinced. Okay. Um, gosh, a couple other things. Oh, would you look at that? Free got bumped down on his fantasy score. Up. Mm. Fuck. Dude. He did get bumped up. Shit. Well, Jake Irvin, you better absolutely get missed today, brother. And then the Nats could come back and be scrappy late. Hopefully not too much, but. That is no bueno. So you're on Max Freed with the rest of Twitter, locking arms, walking down the street today with a Max Freed slip in your pocket. That's what yeah. I'm here. Okay, I am. that makes sense to me. Okay. I mean, it's not even the most huh. it's not even the most corp thing on my card, to be honest with you. This Angels over is probably the most corp thing on my card. Angels over? Are you shitting me? Yeah. <sighs> well, tell me about it. Sell me this pen. What do you well, got? You know what this is, Krabs? You, this just feels like the Nats yesterday because, like, I'm I'm banking a lot of runs on the dog or coming from the dog because I'm not really like Griffin Cannon can do whatever he wants in this this matchup. Like, I he's okay. a barrel machine every single ding or Tuesday. It's probably either going to be Soto, Judge, or Stanton. Uh, not for for any lack of reasoning because he's been a barrel machine and it's a really good matchup for a lot of those guys, especially the lefties. Uh, but you know, he's on the mound for the Yankees today. That'd be nasty Nestor, who's the worst road pitcher on earth, worse than Corbin. Worst road pitcher on earth, uh, almost yeah. a seven ERA on the road. And the Angels are the team who's been absolutely crushing lefties, and that's a trend that I want to ride. Even in the game that uh, you took Logan Allen, which I mean, Patrick Sandoval is on the other side, so you couldn't really back him too much. It wasn't the uh, Fuck Patrick wasn't the Sandoval. bat's fault. I'm just gonna say that I want that yeah, on record. It, it wasn't the bat's fault. That first five was absolute cake. It was his fault. So I mean, they still put professional up professional coin stealer, Patrick Sandoval. Yeah. That's what he is. Yeah. He is he is fucking terrible, which is why I mean Griffin Kennig's not that much better. Uh so I want to put the over in here to fade him. But uh all these lefties or all these righties that are hitting the lefties well, I kind of want to keep riding that trend, whether it's the goat Kevin Pilar who's been in the lineup, whether it's Joe Adele, who I mean he's tapered off a little bit the last couple of games, but he's been hitting nuke after nuke for this team. Uh Logan O'Hoppy, same thing. This lineup's just been dialed. They've been platooning guys, and I think it works. So like Nestor on the road is a, a trend I want to keep continuing to fade. And when you have an over and the Angels bullpen is involved, that's another team that's kind of auto fade late in the game where there's probably going to be, if the Yankees don't get to Griffin Koenig, which it's a possibility, he has strikeout stuff that could make them a little uncomfortable. I still think he pitches 
uh, and gives up a couple Turks. But if they don't, Angels bullpen is going to give up some Yankees magic in the end. You know what's happening. So going with the over, I think the only only way you don't get this is if obviously Nestor has a master class, and that's exactly what I'm betting against. So I'm in on that. Well, while you were talking, I was digging. And I was looking at prize big squares. I was looking at splits. I was looking at this. I was looking at that. I love this over. Sign me up. Uh, yeah. He got a Griffin Canyon square up on prize picks, a two and a half run run square. I mean, hats off to Griffin Canyon. He's low key been pretty good recently. Two runs, one run, zero runs, two runs in his last four starts, five innings, six innings, 5.2, six innings. He's low key been solid. Typically, Griffin Canyon's not putting together four almost quality starts in a row. How long can that last? Uh, the Yankees will probably take care of that. Okay, that offense is unfadeable. Yeah. Good fucking luck, buddy. Straight up. Okay, that's just kick. It is what it is. And the fact that the square is at a goblin rate or goblin price um, is pretty hilarious, right? That means it's juiced to get more than. If you look at the chart, it looks like it should be a normal square, right? He hasn't given up any runs. Love that. Um, I don't think he has a fantasy score. Nestor does, though, and it's a little bit lower than I thought. So I I'm in. Sign me up. We saw the Angels are coming off and over, but the Yankees are coming off a couple unders in a row. I like the angle. I like the spots. Sure. Give me the over. Give me runs. The splits look sharp as a fucking tack. 53% um, of bets, 90% of handle. Griffin Canning. He's been great recently. He's about to look like a Griffin trash can out there on the mound sure. today against the Yanks. Hate to say it, it's true. Yeah, there it goes. Maybe see, Aaron uh, Judge, go and lock him in. I was gonna say yeah. you might have to bring out the jersey for this one. Might go need and it. lock him in, folks. Aaron Judge TBs on Prize Picks. Might as well. All right, if we're taking anything in this game, you know what's about to happen. Aaron Judge is hitting a fucking nuke. If we're yeah. taking overs, time, unders, Yankees. Doesn't matter. Every time you're opponents. involved in a Yankees game, doesn't doesn't matter what it is. It's if I'm sprinkling on that game, he's hitting a fucking nuke. So you guys yeah. know what to do. Okay. You know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yanks, Yanks struggle against lefties. Well, well good thing Griffin, Griffin Cannon is a righty, folks. A righty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. Uh, Crabs turned judge into an MVP candidate. Sure. He did. But it should still be one. So uh, I hope everybody with brains that work on top of their heads understands and comprehends that it's still one. soda that wins MVP. Oh, yeah. Correct? Should be. Okay. I mean... I don't know. Depends depends on the pace we keep up here, but good. Don't, don't don't forget about Gunnar Henderson. See, there oh it is. Get him out of here. I knew it was coming, man. Get him I out knew of here. It was fucking yep. coming, dude. Minus ten thousand. All right, four right capper coming in, dropping some positivity here. Crabs, I'm the guy from X that filled up the lay with the under yesterday. He's talking about that sneak units under in the Mariners game that was free that I texted Trent about, and he definitely didn't tail, but that's okay. Um, he's up 255 to start the week Let's go. after taking all your straights and then the reds and the under and a two leg lay. You're the man W for right capper. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. W's. Um, all right. Yeah. Yankees over Yankees runs judge prize pick squares. You guys know what to do. I will not be locking them in so that you guys can, so you guys can, and you can cash. It's really that simple. As long as I don't touch it, that's all we got to do. Sure. Okay. Um, tell me about this Luca prize pick square. Yeah, I mean, I've seen this one a time or two too. So I mean, this is not the uh, not the sharpest of reads. It seems to be a semi popular one today. But with the Mavs not having Derek Lively, there's got to be somebody who picks up the rebounding slack. Especially, you know, you would assume not that Cat wasn't just sitting in the corner on the three point line. Uh, maybe they use a little more Naz Reed, even more than they have in the past couple of games when Cat's been shooting like shit. Spreads the floor more, more opportunity for rebounds from a lot of the better, you know, rebounding guards instead of you know, Gobert and Gafford and everybody else. I think Gafford's going to have to really focus on putting a body on Rudy mm. Gobert because, I don't know, Lively was able to beat him with some athleticism, which was huge, but Gafford has not technically been, or not really been holding his own, uh, putting a body on him. I think that's going to be a focus, and Luke is just going to swarm in for uh, a lot of rebounds here. I think this is going to be the best way to attack it for Luka because I really couldn't decide whether I wanted to keep points in it or not between him and Kyrie. I uh, just decided to take what I know. And what I know is rebounding opportunities are going to be open. So that can be the same look on the inside and in the paint than it was with Lively compared to Gafford. So I think this is probably what's going to change the most. Hmm. Is it worth a sprinkle on Luca to get a triple-double today? 
because we know he's getting his points. I mean, come on, not even worth our time. Yeah, he's probably I think getting so. his assists. And if you think he's Just, getting more than nine, you know what pounds, I worry. You know what I worry about the most, Krabs? I worry about Lively's not there. So like Gafford, who is a consistent foul trouble guy, who like a lot of Lucas assists. I mean, Kyrie's been doing it too, but a lot of it's been lobs to Lively. He's had some lobs to Gafford too. But if Gafford gets in foul trouble, uh, it's going to be five out with Maxi Cleaver, who I think is back, and he was he's ass. So like it's it, if it gets to that point, I think it's going to have to be Luca just going ISO from the perimeter and hoping he gets a switch on Gobert again. So like the assist, I feel like if Gafford gets into foul trouble, that might be cake. Okay. Dwight Powell. Isn't too, it crazy yes. looking at this? Triple double odds. You got Anthony Edwards, who was Michael Jordan a week and a half ago. Even I said it. I am in yeah. hand up. Plus twenty eight hundred to record a triple double. Luka Doncic, yeah, plus three fifty. I mean, what a freak this guy yeah. is. It's crazy. I remember when he was about to come over here, we're watching the highlights that are recorded on a potato. You can barely even see the player they're talking about. And this little chunky white dude is running around the courts like he's a center who's got handles of a point guard. And we're thinking, this guy's slow as fuck. What's he going to do in the NBA? While we're watching like the John Walls of the world sprint around the Aaron Foxes, get to the rack and use their quickness. Luka Doncic... I mean, we talk about Steph Curry changing the game, and he 100% did more than anybody we've ever seen. Luka Doncic has changed the game, bringing over this Euro mentality, this Euro style almost, where it's so impressive he's able to use his body and still be a point guard and also almost play the four at times when needed. The guy can do everything. If you're starting a one-on-one -on -one tournament, blacktop type, is Luka Doncic your first overall pick right now for active players? Who's the one guy you're taking, any position, any team, current, to win in a game to 21, okay? Threes count as two, ones count as one. Um, are you taking Luka? Is that who you're starting with? Are you starting We're with talking Jokic? just one-on-one? One-on-ones. One-on-one, I'm taking Kyrie. You're taking a that. point guard. I'm taking a point guard that is one of the craftiest finishers we've seen in our generation. But, I mean, that's not, that's not really the point, but... Yeah, Luca is amazing. Wow. Jordan Poole, I bet. <laughs> Jordan Poole's crazy. Can we leave Jordan Poole out of the name? Can we leave his name out of our mouth for at least, you know, a week or two? We've had enough of Jordan Poole, okay? We got the fucking wizard saying he's going to be the leader of the team next year already after he played okay for the second half. We are not in a good spot, folks. We got Big Curd coming in, dropping wow. a five-view community subway, though. That helps. Wizards need to get big, bro. Still get big, and they might if Sar falls, and that could be big. That could Sar's be the next going project. To one. It's just uh, I don't know. Something could hold out, Krabs. I feel like with this draft, there's no certainties really anywhere because it's. Can I we mean, get an odds check on that? I know when we got the number two pick right in the lottery, which by the way, the lottery could not be more rigged. It's hilarious. They put even put that on TV, and they all stand up there and smile like it's not rigged. Come on, it has to be. Atlanta had a two percent chance again the number one overall pick, and they did. Here we go. We got number one overall pick, Sar, still minus 260. That's around where he was um, when the lottery picks came out. So, and then, yeah, that Rissatcher. Yeah. That reset. kid, number two, Bronny. You hearing all this Bronny stuff? Over. Bronny taking, taking up that? all of our time, wasting our time, and <laughs> plus 130. Goots, get that off the screen. I already yeah, locked in that up. number. That I'm now, I will say, Bronny James got invited to 10. NBA team workouts, I believe. He declined all of them but two, the Lakers and the Suns. Hilarious. Imagine actually buying into this whole Bronny James bullshit. You're like, all right, fine, I'll reach out. We'll get a fucking workout in. He says no. Imagine. You're like, yeah, well, you shouldn't even be getting drafted right now, but whatever, fuck it. Um, and that's not even worth talking about because he's going to the Lakers. But Donovan Klingon, maybe? Yeah, you got Klingon. there's a chance to take Klingon at two? People are going to lose their fucking minds if we take Donovan Klingon bot at two. People are going to say, what so. are you doing? I don't think so. I feel like it's but a fair pick for the Wizards. That's exactly what they need, yeah. They've been literally, with or without, you know, Gafford, just literally cookie butter in the paint for years. Tell you what, Zachary Rissacher is, he should be minus 1,000 to get number two because we're taking a French guy. We take four, We take the foreign guys like it's our job every every draft, every single yeah. time. It's so it means either Rissacher or Topich. Sar won't be there. Okay. They can reach. All right, chats. 
Let's lock back in here, reel it in. Reel it in. Um, and yeah, I do like Luka Doncic. He's a fucking stud. Okay, and I don't care who knows it. Jake Irvin, more than one and a half walks allowed, Javon. I don't think I did a good enough job of explaining this puppy, but look at the chart. Okay, and he's yeah. also juiced to the over on the books, minus 130 last time I checked. Jake Irvin, you might be pitching around some of these solid bats for Atlanta today. Shit, I would too. I wouldn't want to fucking throw him Dick Vane fastballs. I'd probably be pitching around them as well. Jake Irvin, he's not going to have his command today. I don't know how Prize Picks knows that. I don't know how the books know that, but they do. Okay, Jake Irvin, look at this fucking square. Look at the odds. Ridiculous. If you use your baseball brain, it makes sense as well. Why would he be throwing Dick Vane fastballs to the Braves? And I think, you know, with how this game's going to start out with plenty of runs early for Atlanta, in my opinion, I could see Jake Irvin getting a little rattled up there on the roads. He's been much better at home in his career than he has been on the roads. That I know. Jake Irvin today might struggle, obviously leaning into that for the first five over. And Jake Irvin fading him, taking his more than one and a half walks allowed on the bump today. Sure. All right. You can't hit that, that square is ridiculous. Can we not bring up the Chris Bryant BS? All right. We already have addressed <laughs> it. All right. Chris Bryant, I cannot believe he did not cross home plate last night. And I'm going to keep calling him Luka Doncic, by the way, Chad, the more you guys get pissed off. Um, Tristan McKenzie. This is an interesting square, interesting angle. I will talk about this one as I go over this Cleveland and Colorado over, Javon. Um, and by the way, that over yesterday was free. Didn't matter who the fuck Fair. was pitching for Colorado. And I think the over today will be free as well. Um, if you take a peep at the Tristan McKenzie five and a half hits allowed square, you could probably understand a little bit better about what I'm feeling here. Um, and Feltner, it does not scare me much either. That's why I'm leaning into the over in the game. But I, I like what I'm seeing out of the Rockies bats right now. They're showing some heart. They're showing some life. I've talked about this, right? MLB, you can't just be betting nasty lines. And although this line does look nasty on paper for the Rockies on that ML, that'd be a bet I would take a couple of years ago when I was down 40 units betting MLP. Okay, this year we're, we're much sharper, much more targeted. I think the better play here is the over. Javon, I'll be honest with you. What is the one angle we've heard about games in Coors Field this season up until a couple of days ago? Not enough overs, not enough runs. That Rockies offense has been the main you know, component of that. Teams have gone in there and spanked that ass. Uh, but the Rockies haven't been able to put up any runs themselves, to be honest with you. Now Colorado finally starting to show some life offensively. Charlie Blackman leading the way. What a day he had yesterday. It was always his TVs, by the way, instead of Chris always. Bryant run, which I'm fucking pissed I pivoted away from. But we're here, and I think the Rockies' bats will show up once again today like they did yesterday. Um, and I think Cleveland hitting against Feltner is already a given, to be completely honest with you. Totals on the move from 10 to 10 and a half. This might even get to 11 as well. Plenty of runs in this game. Wouldn't be surprised if the Rockies pull this one out. About 10 cents of a line movement their way on the ML. Good sign for the Rockies. Total on the way up. I don't want to take the ML. It's a crab's loser from years ago. Instead, let's go with runs in the game overall. Buying low on overs and course. Okay, I think we see sure. overs this entire series. It's not even going to be close. Runs galore. Okay. I'm down for that. Um, what do you think about fading Tristan McKenzie tonight? Uh, you know, I'm a, an avid Tristan McKenzie fader. I don't mind it at all, really, ever. He's pitching through that torn ligament in his elbow, which is god-awful idea. I don't know who told him to do that, but the results haven't been there. The Rockies are getting better as an offense, too, so, I mean, it just might be the time. The only, only thing I would be, like, slightly concerned about, even though the Rockies don't really do it that much, but if McKenzie gets, like, really shelled, one of the things he does is walk the ballpark. So, I mean, maybe hey. he has a disaster class and you get hooked on like five hits or something like that. But I, I still don't think he pitches well, regardless. I'm looking to see if he has a weird walks allowed square. He's got a two and a half walks allowed demon. It looks like it should be a normal square today with how many people he's been walking recently. So that actually makes yeah. me feel a little bit better about it's it, at least right now. Okay. It's because it's the Rockies. Braves, yeah. Nats, total down to eight on offshore. Okay. That's W mm -hmm. analysis from Javon. Kisper from Croatia. I don't think he's from Croatia, my man, but uh, pretty much everyone else the Wizards have drafted has been from overseas recently. Um, did his hits allowed go from regular to goblin? Um, oh my God, it did just go to a goblin right in front of my face. Ooh. There's no way. That's what my my other square did. I put it in there and then I took it out because it turned to a goblin, but I left it in there because it's hitting. Well, if you want a little goblin two-piece, I got one for you, Krabs. All right, what do you got? 
take a trip over to i mean these have sneakily been the best best ones on the board most consistent squares on the board the weird goblin strikeouts for a lot of these goats uh and byron buxton's up today going up against cole reagan's which huh. uh just like uh i guess judge was when he was facing dylan sees he was a lot home run or strikeout like in a matchup like that and buxton is kind of the same thing and judge what he had a home run first ab and he still found a way to strike out two times which is why his square was a goblin so why this square is turned to a goblin but buxton for as much power as he has against lefties he has a much higher strikeout rate against lefties and cole reagan's in a strikeout perspective is very obviously no regular lefty so i think that there's a reason it's a goblin cole reagan's is great they got like his strikeouts in this matchup too hard not to against the twins uh, but Buxton striking out twice in this square. I put it in as a regular square, immediately turned to a goblin, left it in there because I think it's hitting. Byron Buxton striking out twice. You're not letting that Joey Gallo angle the other day get away from you. You're leading back. No, in Joey Gallo. I didn't even bring that one up. That was free, but he uh, he also has a half total base on the board. Byron Buxton does. And whenever you get that little combo of the two, uh, especially with Buxton, he spawns with case. So hmm. leaning into that a little bit too. Okay. We got some good options up there on the board today. Huh. Yeah, we do. Favorite play, favorite angle right now. What do you got? The under in the Nats game. Hmm. Would you say Nats under? Yeah. Toot. You're just ignoring the Jake Irvin squares. You're just saying, ignoring. I don't give a fuck about him. There's there's a handful of teams that I just absolutely ignore everything that's weird about the pitcher that faces them. It's the Braves, the Cubs, the Padres when they're facing a lefty. That's like my big three. Okay. And I mean okay. fingers knock on knock on wood for me, maybe not for you, but it's been working out pretty well. All right. Well, hey, somebody's winning. We could both somehow win, but it's not gonna be easy. All yeah, right. I also I mean, still struggling. Good point. Yeah, I mean, like I said too, like I, I don't think the Nats do anything today. So if Irvin okay. Irvin go up there and give a four, and I think this game could still find its way under comfortably. Okay. I'm seeing this total in the Dodgers Mets game creeping up a little bit right now, up to eight. Yeah, there's there's wind going out, so usually that happens. Okay. Leading up to a couple hours before game time. Hmm. But there, I mean, that's the wind is probably the reason why I'm I'm out on the under. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, we don't need any fluke shit with the batters in that lineup, the heavy hitters in both those lineups. With some wind yeah, blowing out. If, if Glasnow's giving up some fly balls, that might be GG's. Total drop in in Atlanta, Washington. Chat is locked in today, Javon. That's for sure. Yeah, doesn't mean anything now. People forget the total dropped. Total dropped yesterday, too, when I was on the over. So, at the end forget. of the day, you got to they gotta go play the game first. All right. Freeman get a rake today. We'll see, Big Cheesy. Uh, chat what's your guys favorite play today let me know all right can i get some youtube uh engagement here in the in the mentions can i get somebody from the red tube holding it down with their pod can i get a couple twitch guys dropping their pods in the chat what are you guys sweating out what do you guys like the best if they're coming off from the sharp reports if it's a play we talked about that's a-okay you guys can always take our plays take our action all right um yankees ml over in angels and royals ml we're going to talk about that Royals game here in a moment. Judge home run. I fucking bet Jangus. Dirty Nestor under fantasy score. I'm down to fade. Nasty Nestor. Okay. Um, Yankees ML. Orioles ML. Okay. Not bad, Gates. Aaron Judge. Three home runs. All right. Seems like nobody's actually locked in then. All right. W's. <laughs> Chats, we've got a Dinger Tuesday segment to get to here. I, I know Trent really wants us to talk about this Reagans versus uh, Woods Richardson, the pitching matchup of the century game as well. Let's hit that one, hmm. and then we'll go to the Dinger Tuesday segments. I want to talk a little bit more about the Royals and the Twins. Okay, this total opened up at eight, which I personally thought was a tad high but i mean what are they going to open it at seven and a half with all the runs we've seen in baseball overall the last week week and a half i don't know but now we're seeing the total back down to seven and a half looking at the prize pick squares javon once again maybe i'm being too reliant on it but i typically have good success at least with the pitchers on prize picks figuring out what they're showing us listening and betting on the books accordingly i feel like both these starters might get roughed up a tad today i wouldn't be surprised 
if we see one of these two gentlemen, if not both, give up a couple runs early. I almost took this first five over in this game. Um, looking at the Woods Richardson square earn runs allowed on prize picks. He's been nails recently. He's got a two and a half earned runs allowed square up there against the Royals. You know, back of my head, I thought, well, maybe this is prize picks trying to get people to back the trendy Royals um, because they are America's team right now. They're fun. People are betting on them. Lord knows our squad's betting on them. Um, and maybe they're trying to get us to take that more than, and maybe it's bait. But looking at the square, man, I can't ignore it. I think that goes more than. And then you look at Reagan's fantasy score. Now, maybe they just can't set it any higher because he's been doing pretty well recently. I don't know. Javon, I would love your thoughts on it. But I thought the Reagan's fantasy score was a hair low compared to how he's done recently. Um, we'll take a peep at it here. But what are they going to put it at 40? Maybe, though, against the Musha Twins could. offense, right? They could. Yeah. It's Cole Reagan's. So I think the best play here personally, even with the line dropping from eight to seven and a half, this is one of those spots. I think that opening total matters more than where it's at now at eight. That tells me there could be some runs in this game. Looking at the prize pick squares for both starters, I do think they get roughed up a little bit, give up some runs. That doesn't mean they don't get their strikeouts. I haven't looked at that, but I do like the first five over in this game that nobody wants to take with Reagan's and Woods Richardson on the bump. Yeah, somebody, I forget who it was, I saw a tweet on the feed yesterday because, you know, the people are going in for late night plays or whatever to post them. I, I also myself have never seen, like, the two markets this close of, uh, like, they are they were, like, minus 125 at the time. They've gotten, like, 10 cents of steam since then. But, like, he he's minus money to record a win, which you usually only see with, like, massive favorites. So the fact that... Huh those two prices are close together. Like something's going to get weird. Maybe like when their runs are going to be given up probably by him. Cause he hasn't given up a run. And I think his last two starts against the tigers and A's. Uh, but that, that minus sign is usually only reserved for large favorites. Like we look through the rest of the board. That's really the only time you get it. Um, so it's, it's a little confusing. There's going to be something weird with this game. I mean, Reagan's minus minus one thirty or one thirty five, whatever against Woods Richardson looks like air. So, I mean, not that uh, I hate, I assume Trent's on his strikeouts. He's probably going to get those against the Twins. Buxton may uh, may help a little bit in that, but something's going to go sure. on this game. So, I'm, I'm kind of with you on your ankle with the over. Huh. You like that first five over? Oh. Uh, I, I mean, with the line being as close as it is on the ML and knowing that the Royals bullpen is the Royals bullpen, I probably wouldn't want to keep that out of the occasion. Okay. Okay, that's fair. Somebody else asked in chat, what do we think about Jared Jones versus Scooball? Another good pitching matchup between two young studs on the bump. Uh, you know, the prize pick squares really aren't talking to me much. I'll be honest with you about that game. I think I'd probably square up for Kitch and take the under in that puppy. I think that's the one with the two young studs on the mound, so you could square up for Kitch and take it under. Yeah, I don't hate that. My gut definitely tells me Pirates in this one, as much as I love mm. Scooball, because the Pirates... Okay. Uh, they strike out a lot against lefties, which is one of the reasons I think that was the same start that Cole Reagan's struck out 12 in his last one against them. Um, but he kind of flames out towards the end of starts, which for the Pirates, when they get lefties who kind of flame out like that, that's when you see the random nukes kind of appear from like Edward Olivares and the random guys kind of in the middle to the bottom of the order. And I kind of feel like that's going to happen. So I don't think it's going to be much. I don't think they're going to go out and Demolish Scooball, but I kind of think it's the Pirates. Okay. All right. We got Sam Oliver coming in, resubbing. W Sam, 14 months. Appreciate that, Beast. Um, Jack keeps going crazy about this first game of the day at 410 Eastern. Glass now, Miguel. Um, I know we initially mentioned that under the wind, total moving back up now. If you had to play something in that, whether it's a square or straight bet, would you? Do you have anything? I'm not going to, but if I had to play something, it would be the Mets ML. Mets ML? Okay. Yeah. Fading the daytime Dodgers, keeping it simple. Okay. Daytime Dodgers, wind blowing out too. That definitely hurts Glass now, probably a little more than it hurts Migo. Sure. If, okay. if they get the ball in the air on them, of course. All right. Chad, you heard it here first. You need to play for that first game of a doubleheader in New York. Fading the daytime Dodgers. For them, that's an early game. All right. Yeah, until they call up Austin Gauthier, that Dodgers lineup might not get any better. 
Might be cake. They could really use just a grinder at the bottom of that order that plays good defense. Yeah, put them in. Man that gets on base. They Get them really a little insanity one. run for a couple weeks. They could use. I'm not even kidding. They could use one. No, they I mean, literally the guys could. At the yeah. bottom of that lineup are moochets. Give the kid a chance. Send it back down if it doesn't work. Give the kid a chance. He is still playing great. Knock on what? Really don't want to talk about it anymore. But he's still playing great, man. Who knows? We'll see. I don't want to jinx him. Okay. Hmm. Um, Dinger Tuesdays. Let's talk about it, guys. Big day. All right. I know a lot of you guys celebrate. We got Goots who wakes up at the crack ass at dawn today just to get his Dinger Tuesday plays in. I know this one means more for most. Okay. I know this is a big one for you guys who might not be the biggest of baseball guys for some of you. But this is a good way for you to get involved, get some bets in, get some action on the games for Dinger Tuesday. So um, let's lock in here, chats. I got a couple guys on here who you'd probably be pretty shocked to hear about. Ivan Herrera. Javon, you expect that name? <laughs> <laughs> Can't say I did. He's been sneakily no. barreling, though. Mm. Ivan Herrera, this kid, plus 400s. His odds stuck out to me in a game where I think we see runs in St. Louis and Cincy. Uh, this kid's the catcher on the Cardinals, right? He plays most days at this point. Um, I thought it was ridiculous. He was this short, hasn't had a nuke in a while. Board was looking at me funny with his name on it. Uh, I thought he was getting some serious line respect and for a good reason. Plus 400 for Ivan Herrera. If you don't know the name, you'll know it soon. Okay, this guy is a fucking stud. Sneakily has not been hitting nukes. He's been pretty good replacements back there behind the dish. I like Herrera. Um, and I like him to hit a nuke today. Plus 400. Sure. Random again. <laughs> Andrew Rabbit. Might give up some Turks. He's giving up some Turks today. What about Jordan? That's Jordan a little square out. one, but what do you like about it? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how square it is. He hasn't hit a nuke in years. But hmm. um, what the one thing I've learned about Luis Castillo is guys who have hit him well in the past, you always ride those trends. And Jordan's one of the guys who not only has hit him well, but – Hit, hit the ball out of the yard and gotten in the air hard off of him a lot. Uh, so, I mean, Luis Castillo definitely has his struggles against lefties, even when you're in that ballpark. Uh, so, Jordan, Kyle Tucker, I guess, would be the more obvious option, I would say. But <laughs> Jordan, and there he goes. He's waiting for him to spawn. He's the guy that I'm going to go with in this game because I do have, like, a sneaky runs feeling in that game, which, again, if they're going to score runs off Hunter Brown and Castillo, it's probably going to have to be from guys leaving the yard. I think Jordan does it in this series. I mean, he uh, also has some some pretty solid history against the Mariners, if people remember, especially stuff in the playoffs. So he's going to do something this series. Okay. Jordan. You know Trent likes hearing that. He could hear his name called today. Sure. Could be huge. Got some other hilarious names on this list. All right, let's keep moving. Yeah, I do. Bo Naylor. Another game where I'm seeing runs today. Bo Naylor, I don't know if you took a peep at that game or the home run odds, Javon, but talk about getting line respect. Big Bo, I've already seen it. His odds were speaking to me super short today for Bo Naylor in a game where I'm seeing tons and tons of runs. I feel good about him at plus 450. I thought he'd be closer to plus 600. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. You look at these more than I do, but Bo Naylor getting some mad line respect in a game where I'm seeing plenty of runs in course. Give me the plus 450 out of everybody on that list. I didn't see a lot of people who looked weird to me. He by far looked the shortest. Yeah, could be down for that. It's got to be something, somebody or a couple weird guys in that game for you getting nukes. He I thought about going to Chris, back to Chris Bryan. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> so you guys know yeah, what he's about to do. Yeah, you know go he's about to hit two. Chris Bryan to hit a nuke. Yeah, go ahead and lock that puppy. Free. Couldn't free. do it. Pivoted to bow now. Jake Berger. Sure. Jake Plus Berger. 450 as well. Yeah, my first two are on seven and seven and a half total games. So probably not the smartest idea, but yeah. uh, I wanted something against Waldron because I think the, the Marlins are going to be like a pest this whole series, whether it's with their pitching, whether it's with uh, their bats. And truthfully, like I think there's a couple home runs in this game, probably one or two off of Waldron, maybe another or two off of Lazardo. I want to take Berger, though, because Waldron is on the mound and the one thing he really struggles with, whether it's the knuckleball, which is a little different, but even when he uses his other pitches, he just leaves them right down the middle of the plate. And Jake Berger is one of the worst hitters you've ever seen if you can locate well and get the ball to the corners of the plate. But when you leave it over the middle, he looks like Barry Bonds, which is one of the things we saw. I forget who threw that pitch in, in Arizona. Or it might have been Gallon. It was Gallon. He threw a curveball that was top five worst pitches of all time over the weekend. And 
when you do stuff like that against Jake Berger, that's when the power comes out. So even in San Diego, even a low total game, I think somebody's got to do it for the Marlins. And I think it's Jake Berger. Oh, God. Oh, God. Well, well, well. As we, we need get to get eyes bits from back to Malik W Malik. Get eyes on that goods. We need that. 5k PP whale has officially launched into orbit. Oh my Holy God. Holy It shit, starts bro. with Ant. I haven't won a single time taking uh, Anthony. The Ed- old picket TikTok. At what point is this dude going to fucking show up? Game five in the Cancun bowl against SGA. No, I refuse to go down without a fight. One more shot at it. One more go. And I'm fucking drowning, brother. I need you. Five racks. Two goats. Ant with his back against the wall in Cancun. And Reagan's over strikeouts against the Twins. Four days left in May to make a name for myself, man. To get my fucking coin back. If this doesn't hit, Price Picks is going to be joining the Timberwolves in fucking Cancun. I haven't won. <laughs> okay, a couple things. Number one, that was a two-piece. Did he put 5K on? Huh? Two piece, which that I can you know respect. What? That I can respect. You know what? I don't even care what the fucking plays are. I don't give a shit. He could take the squares ones on the board. He could take some prize picks, you know, specials squares more than. If he's taking a two piece, sign me up. Gives himself a fucking chance. Love that right off the rip. Are you kidding me? That's what I'm talking about, Scott. Give yourself a chance. You don't have to shoot a fucking full court shot every time you get the ball, Trent. Sometimes wow. the layup is just good Holy enough. Mike. Yeah. Oh, nice. Sorry. Yeah, get out of, get out of here. Jesus Christ. Holy Fucking ears are bleeding now. Rip headphones. My eyes users. are bleeding after looking at that slip. My ears are bleeding after hearing track. Okay. Jeez, um, jeez. Mm, still got still loud. Jeez. Mm, better. Still jeez. loud, but better. Jeez. Jeez. <clears throat> jeez. Keep going, man. Keep going. <laughs> jeez. You got to turn the slider all the way down. So there. bad. So it's, bad. You are screaming. Jeez, 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 jeez. Oh, there we go. go. Jeez. Sure. He's in the (laughs) 10 new sub whale from Drum Emph. Those are the vibes we need. Let's Let's go, go. Drum. Let's go, Drum. That two piece ain't hidden unless Drum drops a 10 piece sub whale. It's not. It's really not. It's simple math. It really is. Simple arithmetic. We got Ryan Colt coming in, dropping a subby. Can't let that one get swept. W Ryan Colt. Um, all right, Trent, let's talk about these squares. You got Cole Reagan's seven strikeouts against the Moose Shit Twins. Now, we talked about how there could maybe be some sneak runs in that game. Didn't say anything about the strikeouts, though, so I don't hate it. I don't love it. I'm kind of neutral on that square. Javon, where do you stand on Reagan's striking out the Twins today? I mean, I like it. And Buxton is, I have Buxton to strike out two times himself. You do have him in there, so there's two. I do, yeah. I do have to to give you fair warning, though. That that line on the book is going very far down. I just looked at it. It's minus. It was one point. It was seven. I know it was seven and a half. Now it's six and a half, juicy. So if it goes down any further, you're probably going to be seeing six and a half on PP, which is not great. But we see six and a half on PP. I'm fucking done. (laughs) It might happen, but I still like it. I'd bet against it. And then you had ants. 27 and a half points more than? Yeah. Yeah. You see, you see Stephen A slip, Trent? Uh, yeah, I almost tailed it. <laughs> no. Get that, get that up so crabs can see it. No, I know it's yeah. Stephen A and he's fucking rat piss and it's no, all. I'm not, I'm not even I'm not even saying for that square. I'm just saying that the whole slip, I mean, crabs. It's rat piss. Up. Okay. Well, hey, W oh, did not get bumped to 27. Okay. Kyrie, more than points. Cat more than points. I mean, what do you put this together in a half a second? <laughs> Hand his phone off to someone? <laughs> yeah, just give me the four best players more than points. Well, he's fading. What, he fading fucking cat. Turn the phone. It's fading oh, cat. Oh, less That's than one thing. Yeah, less well, he's than the one guy. The one star is the, the whole series. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know there was more down here. But wait, there's more. It's just That's those four. ridiculous. That's really bad. That's really bad. He said, I'm just going to pick what makes the most sense in three seconds. Okay. Well... <laughs> To be fair, Trent, I like the Anthony Edwards angle, right? At some point, he's got to fucking grow up and do something. Why not? Yeah. I mean, I can, looks good. I can rest my head knowing I put my coin on him in a do-or-die game and he didn't fucking hit. Whatever. Fuck him. Yeah. Now, could it I be the cat game? I mean, People it's been are the talking, cat game could it be cats? Games. 
Cap yeah. more than 19 and a half. I mean, yeah, it would have been cake the last three if you bet on it, trying to be sure. I'm I will so say, though. I will say, though, one of the reasons he's been moose shit, he cannot handle any sort of physicality. And the fact that it's probably going to be a little more of Dwight Powell and Maxi Kleber at the four or five for the Mavs, that's a little different. It's a little hmm. different. Hmm. Now I'm speaking about I like the square. No, I like the um I like the two piece, man. Give yourself a chance. Diversify the portfolio. You got one baseball player, you got one NBA player, you got one nasty square, a little contrarian in Anthony Edwards. You got one, you're squaring up for catch. I like it. All right. Give yourself a fucking chance. Why? I will I will absolutely be throwing it back for Greg Obbies. Oh yeah, you will. In this economy, are you kidding me? <laughs> You will be throwing it back for Greg Ops. Come on. We take pushes around here for two piece five rack uh lineups, right? Yeah, five racks. We got never... mint is ass coming in resub and Mavs winning the ship. Trent comments. I wouldn't even be shocked, brother. They are just playing the most insanity type basketball I've ever seen. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. It is impressive. Impressive, Jesus. Um sure. speaking of that game. Before we wrap up here at Dinger Tuesdays, I want your guys' thoughts on T-Wolves and Mavs tonight. Once again, just like game three, spread open up around plus three and a half for the T-Wolves. Now they're down to plus one and a half. They look sharp. Doesn't matter. I don't know. After what we saw in game three, because they had a chance to take that game and win it, and they didn't want it. Timberwolves did not want it. Dallas gave it to gave them a chance, and they said no thanks. Um, series might be over. Personally, I, I think the T-Wolves are the sharp side, but I don't know if I want to get hurt again. And I also have a future on the Mavs. So that's where I stand. I'm also afraid about the under in this game because it totals up two points. I think we could see some points in this one. Yeah, I do think it, it's the T-Wolves tonight. Okay. Because partially of what I said, like with Lively out, I mean, the, one, the Mavs' biggest advantage in the series, which one of the reasons why people in the comments, even our comments, were saying T-Wolves were – going to run through the maps in the series is because they have you know cat and gobert in the paint they're big they're physical mcdaniels was uh supposedly supposed to lock down luca even though he scored 30 in every single game uh they haven't been that way and Derek lively big reason why it's like again they're going to be a little less physical like i think something probably to look out for tonight too would be gobert on the boards where he's been pretty ghost all series and i think it's going to be a little different today so like i think it's going to be him versus luca on the boards um, so, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm going to get to the table with the T-Wolves, but it's definitely like a drastically different game than it was for the first three. Trent? <sighs> Austin's props on Reagan's under K's. I'm done. Okay, hang him up. <laughs> hang him up. I like Reagan's <laughs> under K's today. <laughs> Just keep the 5K and go to Cancun yourself. That'd make too much sense, folks. Um God, that's going to be a sweaty two-piece, but I'm just happy he sent a two-piece. Yeah, I can't hate him for that. I've been begging him for that since fucking last summer when he started. If you're going to nuke, nuke, but give yourself a goddamn chance, will you? And that's exactly yeah. what he's doing. That's what he's okay, doing. He doesn't need to fucking it. cure cancer. He doesn't need to fucking hit a six-piece, right? He's locking in a two-geyser. Let's get a little lucky, and let's pick the right squares, plain and simple. Um, sure. Let's wrap up Dinger Tuesday here. I think we might have one more to go over, and I also need to hear Goots' Dinger Tuesday plays. Of course, people in chat are asking for it. They need it. Um, real quick, Lane Thomas bounced back, came back yesterday, had a pretty good day, actually, in his return to the lineup. He faces a lefty that actually owns him tonight in Max Freed's. I know Javon's going to hate this one. He's got the under in the game, but going with the first five over that I've got and fading Max Freed's, Lane Thomas, who has terrible numbers against Max Fried in his career, but we know what Lane Thomas does against lefties. I think after hitting that double yesterday to get his fucking, you know, round two of this season started, I guess you could say, a little reset after a moose shit beginning to the season and then getting hurt, he'll have some confidence. He's feeling good back at the top of that order against the Braves team who we just beat. We just put runs up against Lane Thomas, back, Nats, offense on the roads. They can cook. They've got some fucking heart. They've got some life. Lane Thomas, looking at the odds, right? C.J. Abrams has hit back-to-back -back home runs and back-to-back -back games. He's plus 800 to hit a nuke tonight. Lane Thomas has shorter odds. I thought that was wild, especially sure. considering Lane Thomas's terrible numbers against Max Fried in his career. But we know Lane Thomas is much better against lefties. He's a lefty merchant in his career. 
I think he's due for one. And I think he takes one out of the fucking park down there in Atlanta tonight and gets that first five over the hump. Yeah, I can respect that one. Hopefully it's it's mm. the one the Nats get. Sure. Okay. Yeah, maybe kind of like that first five under we had with Mackenzie Gore on the bump the other day and Luis Garcia hit that three-run nuke and fucked us. Yep. Maybe Elaine Thomas three-run nuke or a two-run nuke if CJ gets yeah. Um. Okay. Tell me about Taylor Ward if you haven't already. I don't think you went over yeah. that yet, did you? Yeah. Same read as, as the game and why I'm taking the over. Nestor on the road. Nestor against the lineup that kills lefties. Best lefty hitter in the lineup. That's not just a pure platoon guy. Is Taylor Ward. He also hits the ball in the air a lot more than a lot of the other guys, like a, a Joe Adele even, but like a Kevin Pillar too, who's also, I think, a pretty good look for some kind of props today. But Taylor Ward's the guy. Hits the ball the hardest. Puts the ball in the air the most. Uh, and I think he has a pretty good matchup. He is not afraid to turn on one of those cutters that Nestor tries to bring into him. And you got the uh, the short little left field wall that maybe you can send one over there. But I think he's going to have to be a, a pretty big part of this game, pretty big part of the offense if the Angels are going to score runs, which I do think they score runs, obviously, off of Nestor. So give me Taylor Ward. He's been locked. Sure. I like the play. Which one's your favorite out of these three? I'm assuming you're not. Would have to be your dono, but I mean, that's the the most reasonable one by a wide margin. So, I mean, of course, it's it's the favorite. Okay, but Burger mine Burger is, speaking, uh, not gonna lie. Mine's Ivan Herrera. I don't know what it is about this guy, but I've already seen him hit a nuke today. Maybe two. Yeah, just pick on that two plus home runs for tonight. It might just be you know, it might just be Krabs. It might just be Goldie you got. He might oh, be on his yeah. That was an unbelievable. He might be on his yesterday. Devers run. Yeah, it was, he's on a Devers. unbelievable call yesterday. I mean, he's we're on fucking. His that was actually fading the only the one they got. Yeah. We're fading the Cardinals yesterday. Javon goes, oh, yeah, we could fade him, I guess. But Paul Goldschmidt's going to hit a nick. <laughs> what is he doing his first fucking at bat? Oh, the- yeah. Chalked in there. There you See ya. I bet. Yep. Cardinals scored guys. zero other runs. Sneak that in an entry. I bet. Sure. <laughs> it's like on the uh, Coors Nerf. 14-1. <laughs> Chat, the day that the fucking nerfy has been 14-1, I took one. And it was the course there. Yeah. Kyle Quantrill, Rangers for us should be free. You can't make it up. <laughs> you can't make it up. That was two days ago, by the way, when, yeah, yeah Nerfies went 14 and 1. It was all over the fucking niche. Yeah. Okay. And who took that one that didn't fucking hit? You forgot bet. to post about it. If I would have posted yeah, it, yeah, that would have been gold. So that's okay, though. Right. Um, that's just fucking hilarious, dude. Oh, my God. Trent, anybody hitting a gag today? Or are you crafting up a no home run lie for this beautiful Tuesday? Yeah, definitely. We'll we'll post a no home run lie. Haven't hit one this year, okay. shockingly. Well, you're due. You're due. <laughs> we do. We're talking about how good they were last year. We jinxed it. Mm. Yeah. All, All right. right. We need to Gates, get your ass up here, too. man. We need to hear your Dinger Tuesday plays, and then we'll do the squad ride. We'll get out of here, and then we'll have the uh, surge stream back with Trent right after this. Okay, guys, stick with us. Goose. One nugget on Herrera. He got hit in the nuts on Sunday night baseball, so it might be a nuts play today. Oh my God, that he was did. him. He did. Sunny that Gray. was him. The old nut tap. The See, old that's nut where I, you know, personally, I'd probably draw the line there with my boys doing the old nut tap on the cup, but to each his own. Um, that was yeah. one of the funnier clips I've seen on the fucking feed all week. That was ridiculous. Well, the crazy part is like people probably saw that and didn't know that he got hit in the nuts, so they're just like, well, what, what's going on here? <laughs> I mean, hysterical, bro. The slow mo. Yeah. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Anyways, Ivan Herrera, sure. Yeah. He's kind of a geek. Let's keep his name in the uh, spotlight here. Let's hit a nuke tonight. Goots. Why not? What do um, you got? Christian Walker hit last week again. There's no reason not to take okay. him again on a Tuesday. Literally just sure, zero not? reason at all. Uh, and okay. then Josh Naylor, the brother of Bell, he's just another goat that loves to hit home runs on Tuesdays. So I'm going to keep riding him until he doesn't. Pause. Wow, you're taking um, Josh. I'm taking both. Yeah. Josh, Josh Naylor, Christian Walker, and then Gunnar Henderson. It's just a classic. No, 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 no. I got, I got a plums play that I saw this morning. I just was like, let me just click this button. It was it's Julio, J Rod. You know, huh. He's yeah. been heating up recently. I saw him hit two nukes at Nats Park this weekend. Yep. He's starting to get going. That could be a good he hit, read. He hit two in a row, yeah. Okay. Could be it. All right, Goots. And well, then I'm probably going to take a Padre. Hit. But I'm waiting for the lineup. All right. It's so many. Chat, if you don't know, Gooch is pretty fucking dial with these Dinger Tuesday plays. All right. It's easy when when you find the guy who just can't stop hitting homers on Tuesday. 
makes it easy. Oh, yeah. That would make it a lot easier. Does help. Does help. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Gates. Christian Walker, you know he's hitting one. Oh, yeah. Juwan, you want to tell the people about my mute on tape, Josh Naylor? Trent did text me. I was I took a fucking nap after I got back to the house, and I wake up, and I see – Josh Naylor, meet on table from Trent. I look and over five in course. It was <laughs> unreal, dude. Literally unreal. All right, granted, I texted you that before I asked Gab Beauty if it was always Josh Naylor. And then I texted you that. And then I texted her asking if it was Josh. And she said, he's looked absolutely atrocious the last two weeks. Oh. And I was like, well, Jeej. Jeej. And then sure enough, over five. We picked the two guys in that game and didn't do shit. I took Chris Bryant. He couldn't find a fucking his way on. Chris base. Bryant in 2024. Crap. Chris Bryant's <laughs> hitting a nuke today. That's all he needed right there, folks. Go ahead and timestamp that market. Yeah, quicker. good. He's, I need, go I need to, uh, He's hitting one today. I need to address His odds are also well. a little short. Can't be Sano doesn't catch Waldron, so do not put coins on him, please. Mm, yeah. Okay. Might be cake. Yeah. Might be. Okay um all right chat let's lock in it's already 2 p.m eastern we got to get a squad ride poll going here before the um surge stream with Trent right after this okay so stick with us crabs rumor has it tcu has resigned to the max any words on the lembon contract you might have to have a a tcu frogs 19 return sometime soon it's been in the works there's been some talks yeah talking about fucking... college football 25 I mean, we'll be back for that. Frogs 2K NBA. We're talking about TC Frogs. TCU in the Frogs. Corner. Jimmy Butler is what you're talking about. In the some corner. Okay. Yeah. Yapton huh. on the IR for life. Yapton might be, yeah. Career end. He might have the Lonzo Ball injury. <laughs> he just had to get a new meniscus. Yapton, Yapton okay. Ben Simmons injury. Ben Simmons, character issues, and uh, Lonzo Ball meniscus. That's what we yeah. got down there for Trent Scott. Jeez. <laughs> might have to bring it. Might have to bring the team back though. Holy smokes. Um, all right, chat. We got to lock in here for a sec. This is very, very important. No fun. No more jokes. No smiles. Okay. Can we get some squad ride options going? That lock under in here for a sec. That under last night fed bloodline. I wish you tailed it. It did. And it was sweaty as fuck. All right. Smile. And W stream last night. At the tables, by the way, Trent. We got Nate Wright coming in, resubbing. Go, 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 go. Yeah, it's about that time, Nate Wright. Goots, run that shit, brother. All right. Well, whatever we did yesterday, whatever mindset we had, whatever mindset Chad had selected a winner, let's stay in that same mindset. Let's stay locked in here, Javon. Throw me some plays you're in love with for today. So we're canceled out on one of them because we're yes. on opposite sides. Um, you know, I think it's hitting. I do like the D-backs. Snake's revenge game to open the series in Texas. Okay. You're really Speaking liking the D-backs. Okay. Yeah. All right. I like the over better, but I could be convinced. Diamondbacks MO. Yeah. I'm in. Um I like that Angels and Yankees over as well. You want to put that in there? Yep, fine by me. Hmm. Is that a nine and a half or nine right now? Nine. Okay. We've got that. We've got the Diamondbacks ML. <sighs> Guards Rockies over. Sure. Yeah. Guardians Rockies over, which I believe is at 10 and a half right now. Sure. Goods. We could roll with those three. Now, do we dare put the Timberwolves in there? We both know our asses are going to be on them tonight. Do I want to look at the splits maybe first and see what people are betting? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm taking them, but I don't really love it enough to be a squad ride vote. Kyrie never lost in a elimination game or a series closeout game. Yeah. That's the stat that's the last. narrative you're gonna be hearing. You're telling me both series, there's about to be two sweeps. Come on. We're not seeing two sweeps in the conference finals. 
I think we take the T Wolves, bro. And if you're giving the sign off, sure. I think we take the T Wolves. You will have financial stake on them today. Yeah, I'll have a unit. Just One about measly it. unit. A measly unit. Okay. Um, yeah, let's take them. Let's put the T Wolves in here on the end now. Any other plays? Do you want to take the Rangers on the ice? Probably winning, but I can live without that play. Okay. Anything else we're missing here? Maybe Don't think the so. It's Kansas not a great City, board. Minnesota over. Down and off, force that and put that know. in there. No, because I kind of think the Twins win that game. And the last time there's a super short line with Woods Richardson and everybody and their mother took the other side, he was Cy Young. So, like, if that happens okay. again, and Cole Reagans happens to get touched up and it still doesn't go over, that would be piss. Okay. Let's go ahead and lock this in. Four plays. You good with these? Diamondbacks ML, Yankees Angels over nine, Guardians Rockies over ten and a half, and the Timberwolves ML. Four plays, sure. four winners. Chat. Stay dialed. Hurry up. We only got two minutes for the squad ride vote today. We're already way over time for the surge stream. If you have a winner for today, please give Trent the sell job of the century. Sell him this pen. Give him a fucking play. Sell job so good. He has no choice but to tail. All right. Stay dialed. Come up. Give him some winners. We'll stay on here for about a minute or two as long as this vote takes. And we'll take you guys over to the surge stream. Just stick with us. Okay. Looks like we've got ooh, that over in... Anaheim out to an early good start. I don't mind that. Hmm. I don't hmm. mind that. Okay. I wouldn't say there's a nuclear missile whale play on the board for me as of right now, like the under in Seattle last night. I do like all these plays up there on the board, though. I could get behind all these. Javon, what are we voting for? What do you like? Vote for the snakes. But I like that over, too. Snakes on now? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, God, I like that over in Anaheim. I wouldn't mind that winning. Looks like that over in Coors is getting absolutely swept under the fattest of rugs. Swept. No respect whatsoever. I like that play a lot too. That one's that one is getting swept. Shit. T Wolves. I thought they would be the winning vote, to be honest with you. I'm impressed. Look at the discipline from chat coming in right now. A lot of discipline. Beauty Pete on the Yankees Angels over. Okay, Brady. Right. All right. All right. Um, shit, man. Looks like it's going to be the over in that game. Fading Nasty Nestor. Lock in your Aaron Judge slips, chats. Lock in your Aaron Judge Dinger Tuesday plays. I will not be partaking. You're welcome. All right, I'll just stick to the squad ride votes. I am good on back in Aaron Judge. I'm a man of the people here. I'll let you guys have that one, but you know what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. As soon as I hit that send button and lock in that over in Anaheim. All right, chat. Yankees, Angels. Over nine squad rides. We'll meet you guys at the cash counter. Let's stay hot. We're heating up. Javon, great job today. All right, we'll be back tomorrow. Same time, same place. All right, chat, stick around for the surge stream. We'll be safe. Peace, guys.